Hello kids and kins, welcome to Touch Me There, a relationship talk. This is my first ever episode and I'm extremely excited. Please join me weekly as I set you on the path to get the love you deserve by giving you successful dating tips and relationship advice. Today, I'm sharing with you dating advice for dating beginners and veteran daters alike. These science-based techniques will help you set the foundation for love to bloom. I hear you ask, what tips do you have for dating beginners? So get comfortable, relax with your favorite brew, and let me indulge you in science-based first dates advice, proven to work by laying the foundation for love to bloom. Before delving into the actual tips, I think it's important for you to understand the hormones that influences our behavior during dating and falling in love. I believe this knowledge will help you successfully navigate your dating journey with confidence and ease. As we all know, romantic love is one of the most euphoric encounters you can experience. So let's look briefly at what happens in the brain when you're attracted to someone. When you lock eyes with someone you're attracted to, the feelings you have as you experience passion is chemically induced. There are several chemicals involved in the process from attraction to falling in love, which are phenylethylamine or PA for short, dopamine, neuropinephrine, oxytocin, serotonin and vasopressin. PA is chemically similar to amphetamine and is a mild alkali stimulant produced naturally in the brain and when we fall in love. PA is also stimulated when we win a prize, when we bungee jump or skydive, when you take drugs such as cocaine or when you're frightened or angry. It gives the brain psychological energy, focus, drive and elevates a depressed mood. So a food for thought is, can love actually heal us? These chemicals, i.e. dopamine, neuropinephrine and PEA, acts on the limbic system, which is the emotional center of the brain and is responsible for feelings of euphoria and ecstasy we experience during new love. Dopamine increase in the brain is associated with heightened attention, motivation and goal-directed behavior as a lover focuses on the object of their desire. So since we're focusing on tips for a first date with hopes of making that beautiful stranger fall in love, we will focus on the hormone dopamine to create dates that increases dopamine level in the brain. The idea is if you want someone to like you, you put them in a good mood by by raising their dopamine level and associating yourself with a good time. All things equal, this will create interest and the right environment for love to bloom. So without further ado, let's get into the dating tips and advice. If you do something novel, i.e. new with someone, you drive up the dopamine in their brain and perhaps this triggers the brain system for romantic love. Here are some activities that you can now indulge in to trigger dopamine release. Firstly, start by understanding what activities trigger excitement for your dates. So before you actually plan the date you can have a discussion with him or her to find out what they like doing something that's exciting something that's endearing or something that just gets you going for example it could be a gym session it could be going out to eat it could be listening to live music etc if you're stuck for ideas perhaps you can go for a rickshaw ride in the city that's very exciting and thrilling and that would definitely raise the dopamine level in the brain. You can go for a dopamine rich meal. You can watch a scary movie or go zip lining, skydiving, parasailing, or go to an amusement park. So basically something that's exciting and endearing. 
Attraction is based on our pheromones, something that is instinctive and which is often overlooked. The best way to smell someone's pheromone is right after a workout or any activity that works up a mini sweat. Therefore, you can do activity with your crush that gets the pheromones going, such as hiking, rock climbing, doing a workout together, or going for a walk. These activities also trigger dopamine release. This goes without saying, but dress well and smell good. An experiment conducted by Princeton University showed that people make accurate judgments of others within one tenth of a second. So smell good, relax, show a sense of humor, i.e. crack a few jokes. If you're not a naturally funny person, you can highlight another aspect of your personality that you think your date might be interested in, but please stay away from the one-liner, please stay away from the dad jokes as they can be off-putting. Find out what's your crush favorite scent. Our sense of smell is one of the brain's most primitive senses, same as the sex drive. As a result, memories connected with a scent is stored more deeply. Think of your favorite scent from a meal or someone that you're very close to, and you'll see how quickly the memory related to that scent comes floating back to you. No matter how long it's been since you've experienced the scent, it will come back to you vividly if you allow yourself to focus on it. So you can provoke your date's favorite scent by wearing it and hopefully a new memory is going to be attached to that scent, that which is you of course, and that would live with them for a very long time. Listen with keenness and ask follow-up questions to show interest. Next. You can use the mirroring or chameleon effect, which involves subtly mimicking another person's behavior. The aim is to make it unconscious rather than obvious as mimicry sparks liking. You can copy body language, lingo, gestures, and facial expression. Mirroring creates the impression that you're similar we bond with people who are similar because it creates a feeling of familiarity. Copying their lingo, use of sensory words and adjective instantly builds rapport with anyone you meet. We use words based on our sense or primary intelligence, or sorry, our primary intelligent type, I should say. We generally favor one of our five senses over the other. For example, a musician may favor his sense of hearing and he or she might use phrases such as, that sounds good, or I hear what you're saying. A personal trainer might favor his or her sense of touch and might use phrases such as, I feel you, or I'm touched, or that rubs me the wrong way. Similarly, a painter might favor his or her sense of sight and might use phrases such as I can see that or that looks good and so on. So if the person you're speaking to uses phrases that indicate their preferred sense, you can indulge a conversation with the same phrases, creating familiarity to get on their good side. If you're going out to eat, you can plan a date somewhere that has dopamine-rich food, then suggest what they should try based on the food that has the dopamine ingredients. Dopamine-rich food includes uh, nuts and seeds. Please ensure that you're diligent and your date is not allergic. Uh, Chicken, eggs, meat, fish, prawns, soya, legumes and beans, cheese, milk, yogurt, green tea, watermelon, cranberries, wine, grapes, blueberries, pistachio, herring, lake trout, mackerel, salmon, sardines, and seafood. Thai food normally contains uh, many of the ingredients listed here, but you can 
do research and explore other cuisines if you're not a fan of Thai food. You can also cook for your crush if it's someone that you've known for some time and it's not a blind date. You can suggest cooking a meal and, inc and include uh, any of the ingredients listed previously. Cooking for a partner makes them feel safe and it would be easier to incorporate other strategies such as provoking their sense of smell with a candle that has their favorite scent. Make the person feel important. One of the best ways to make a person feel important is by giving compliments, not flattery, but genuine, honest compliments based on something you've observed as part of their outfit, an aspect of their personality, physical feature, and so on. You can venture as far as to elaborate on why you like that particular aspect that you're complimenting. Study shows that giving someone a compliment activates the same neuron in the brain as receiving a physical gift. Take care not to overindulge this strategy as it can become off-putting. So throughout the date, you can give two or three compliments, but try not to overdo it and do it too often because it can come across as insincere in that case. Another way to greet your date is by using the eyebrow flash. The eyebrow flash is commonly used amongst people who are familiar with each other as it shows you're happy to see them. It's a good strategy to use when meeting new people because it creates a feeling of familiarity and closeness since people typically only use this gesture when they know each other. So how do you do the eyebrow flash? You make eye contact and immediately raise both your eyebrows. Make a quick up and down, hold it for too long and you run the risk of looking like a scared deer in the headline. Next, our brain gets bored easily and therefore needs to be stimulated with entertaining nuggets. Developmental molecular biologist John Mendina discovered that the brain has a very short attention span. This may indicate why we are attracted to people and things that are intriguing, interesting and engaging. Sometimes we act boring because we are afraid of being seen as weird or different. So we don't share aspects of how we feel, we hide our quirks or we try to fit in. The idea is don't be ordinary, don't be fit, don't fit in, don't be boring, don't be dull. It's very unattractive. Just show your personality, be who you are, and the likelihood of the person liking you is definitely will definitely increase in that case. Just be interesting. Emphasize share values as people are attracted to those who are similar to them. Smile frequently. Research shows that when we meet someone for the first time, we notice their eyes followed closely by their smile. So a smile puts us all in a good mood. So smile, smile, smile. Don't stop smiling because people love it when we smile and it also increases other people's mood or it will definitely increase your date's mood. You can't smile enough. Next, see the other person how they want to be seen. This is known as the self-verification theory. Whatever our views are, whether negative or positive, confirmation of our views are important to us. Research suggests that people's belief, when people's belief of us align with our own, it builds a good bond in our relationship, making it flow more smoothly. Feeling understood as it is an important component of intimacy. Next step is be a little bit vulnerable and show emotional openness by disclosing something important or sharing a secret. Self-disclosure may be one of the best relationship building techniques. When you share intimate information with someone, they feel closer to you. Harvard researchers recently discovered that talking about yourself may be inherently rewarding the same way 
that food, money, and sex is. Results show that the brain region associated with motivation and reward, the same region associated with sex and feeling good, are most active when people speak about themselves. So let your date talk about themselves. It makes them feel valued and important. Many, in many cases, people tend to think that um, the art of conversation is being able to talk, talk, and talk. But as you've just realized that maybe the art of conversation is allowing other people to talk by asking them questions as it makes them feel good. So allow your date to talk as much as possible. Ask interested questions to find out more about them and let them talk as this will put them in a good mood and create that feel-good feeling which they would associate you with. Indulge childhood memories and activities such as going to a fair or playing childhood games such as skating, biking, go-karting, leapfrog, sack race, kite flying, spring dodger, water gun fight, trampolining, etc. You can ask your date about their favorite childhood memory or game and plan a date around that. Stimulating childhood memories and playfulness is a good way of bonding and stimulating uh, that feel-good feeling especially if they had a good childhood and it's something they really enjoy doing or the particular activity they suggest that they really enjoy doing they will associate you with that memory which is always good because it will that memory will be stored for a very long time Plan a date near water, such as boating or punting, as this is romantic and calming. Sunlight increases our number of dopamine receptors and it helps the body to produce vitamin D, therefore stimulating the release of dopamine. Plan a date in a park on a sunny day or go punting. Next, plan a meditation date. Meditation is a form of spirituality and spirituality is one of the form of intimacy. So building spiritual intimacy from the get-go is, is a way of building one of the pillars for allowing love to bloom or the relationship to, to develop in the right way. Touch releases oxytocin and drives up de- dopamine. So plan a couple's massage. Uh, you can take turns massaging each other or you can use a masseuse. Uh, either way, if you plan a couple's massage, it will be very relaxing and it will increase the oxytocin and drive up dopamine, which will be good for your bonding. It would be a good bonding exercise. Go to a local zoo or go animal feeding. You can do a class together such as dancing, art, live drawing, naked live drawing or wine making. You can do perf- go to a perfume making class as we've discussed the effects of scents earlier. So you can create a scent together. The memory of that will last forever and bond you as a couple. And last but not least, you can visit a fruit orchard or a farm. So I really hope these tips will help you to plan a very good day that would create a very good bond and set the foundation for love to bloom. This podcast is available on Spotify, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave me a voice message. I would be extremely delighted to hear from you. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and please share this podcast with family or friends who you think might find it useful. Don't forget to leave me a review, as this will give me an indication of how things are going And this is important for me to plan future episode 
and to understand how you feel, how I'm helping you to get the kind of love you deserve. So please, please, please leave me a review. It's very important to me. I cherish you as a listener and I need to know how things are going. If you need a date in a relationship coach, you can visit my website. I will provide a link in the description. In my next episode, I will look at couples compatibility. So please ensure that you join me if it's something you're interested in, how to figure out how you're compatible as a couple. So until next time, bye-bye and I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.